Okay, we're going to start talking about section 2.3, multiplying and dividing rational numbers. You should put that heading at the top of your paper, but you do not need to um, copy those rules down into your, into your notes. All right, you can just copy the problems and do them along with me. All right, I want to talk to you about the rules for multiplying and dividing signed numbers, and they're very different than the rules for adding and subtracting are. Okay, so I just want to take a look up here where you see two like signed numbers, 5 times 2, and you know that equals 10. Okay, likewise, negative 5 times negative 2 also equals positive 10. So if you're multiplying the product of two like signed numbers, you get a positive. Okay, um, if you're multiplying here, a positive and a negative, you'll see that your answer is negative. And again, a negative times a positive is a negative. So you need to keep that in mind while you're doing multiplying and dividing. The rules for dividing are the same. Um, you see here 6 divided by 3 is positive 2. Negative 6 divided by negative 3 is positive 2 because those are like signed numbers. All right? And then down here with your unlike signs, negative 6 divided by 3 is negative 2. And positive 6 divided by negative 3 is negative 2. Okay, so let's get to applying those rules. Here in example one, you see problem letter A. It's negative 9 times negative 4, okay? And because it's a negative times a negative, I know my answer is going to be positive. Okay, next problem, letter B. Here's a suggestion for you. Because sometimes we forget about the sign, I want you to like evaluate and say, is the answer to this problem, problem letter B, going to be positive or negative? And I want you to put that sign right where it belongs first, then go do the work for the problem, and that way you won't forget about the sign. So here we have multiplying fractions, so I need to make them both look like common fractions, 5 over 1 times negative 2 over 3, okay? And then you could look to cross-cancel, which you cannot do in this problem. Otherwise, you just multiply straight across the top, and you get 10, and straight across the bottom, and you get 3. And I'm putting my answer back where it belongs with that negative sign waiting for me. Okay, so answer problem over here, dividing. 12 divided by negative 4. I want you to think about the sign of the answer first. Did you get it right? And then do the division. Okay, next one. Negative 12 divided by negative 4. I want you to think through the sign. These two are like signs, so I know my answer is going to be positive. My answer is positive 3. Okay, I know you don't need to put that plus sign there, but it doesn't hurt to just kind of think it through. Um, anyway, let's go on. All right, evaluating expressions. It's going to be really, really important that you do the substitution step. Substitution is the step where you, um, the variable comes off and the number that the variable equals goes in in its place. So let's look at example two here, okay? Um, negative two times x times y is what the problem says. I'm going to write it down, as should you, with the substitution done. Negative two times x, which is negative 20, times y, which is negative three. Okay, so here we have a new type of problem where we've got three factors being multiplied. All right, and they're all negative. So let's take it one step at a time and see what the answer comes out to be. Do you think the answer is going to be positive or negative? Think about it for a second, and now let's do the math. Negative 2 times negative 20, because it's like signs, you know the answer is going to be 40. Now, I have to take that 40 and multiply it by negative 3, and now we're multiplying to unlike signs. All right, so 40 times negative 3 is negative 120. Okay, let's do example 6 next. Okay, um, here it says evaluate the opposite of x over negative 4 plus 2y divide by z. And your first step is that substitution step. Let's do it. So, I know you almost want to read that as negative x, but it really is the opposite of x. So, since I know that x is negative 20, the opposite of x is positive 20 over negative 4 plus 2 times what y is divided by negative 1. Okay, now it's just down to order of operations. So, um, we're definitely going to do the multiplication and division first before the addition. Okay, and we're just going to do it in order from left to right. So the first thing I come to is this 20 divided by negative 4. 
and since they're unlike signs, I get negative 5. And the next thing I come to is 2 times 6, and then the next thing is divide by negative 1. So I have to just copy that down. Now looking at this problem, I know that order of operations is going to tell me to do the division first. So now I'm going to get negative 5 plus 12 divided by negative 1. Since they're unlike signs, I get negative 12. Okay, now I'm back to the rules for addition. I have negative 5 plus negative 12, which gives me negative 17. Okay, nice job on that one. Example 4 is really kind of... Um, it looks simple, but it's really kind of a tricky concept in math. Okay, what we want to do is it says use the order of operations to simplify each expression. So here we have negative, negative 3 to the fourth power, and this one negative 3, the whole quantity to the fourth power. Okay, so I know it's weird, but these two numbers have different answers. Okay, and let me just tell you right off the bat that the answer to this one is negative 81. And the answer to this one is 81. Okay, if you don't believe me, you could check on a calculator. Just make sure you use the parentheses the way you see them here. Let's talk about why. All right, what this problem is really saying is anytime you see a negative out in front of a number, it's really saying negative 1 times 3. That's really what that means, to the fourth power. Now, if you look at it this way, okay, your order of operations says you have to do the exponents first. And so this says, what is 3 to the 4th power? Well, I want to remind you that in your mind, you should be thinking 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. That's 3 to the 4th power. So 9 times 9, or 81. Okay, so I know that that part is 81. And then you have to multiply it by negative 1. That's the way order of operations goes. And that's why we get an answer of negative 81 for this problem. Okay, so the next one. All right, we're looking at this problem, problem letter B. All right, why does this one turn out to be 81? Okay, and in this case, if you want, you could make that negative 3, negative 1 times 3 again, just like we did before. Okay, and because the parentheses changes the order here, now it says parentheses first. So I need to do that negative 1 to the third power first. Okay, so then we kind of get back to where we started, which is negative 3 to the fourth power. Okay, and what that means if you think about that, is that means everything in the parentheses times itself four times, just like you see here. Okay, and so going through here, negative 3 times negative 3 is 9, and negative 3 times negative 3 is 9, and 9 times 9 is 81. And that's why you get a positive 81 here, because the exponent is referring also to the negative number. Whereas here, the exponent is referring only to the main number, and the negative is sort of on its own, and that's not something we're used to. All right, that's it for the notes. Um, let's go, oh no, there's one more. Oh, my fault. Okay, um, this type of problem that you see here is just a, um, a way to write divided by. So when you do your substitution step, it will look like this. Negative 3 fourths divided by, I use a little extra long, um, fraction bar, divided by negative 5 halves. Okay, so that's a little confusing looking. That looks like a complex fraction. So I'm going to make it less confusing looking by changing this divide by sign to this one. Okay, so now I have negative 3 fourths divided by negative 5 halves. All right, now that looks a lot easier. I can tackle that problem, and I know how to divide fractions is by this phrase that you may have learned, leave, change, flip. That applies only to dividing fractions. Okay, so what does that mean? We're going to leave the first number alone, negative 3 fourths. We're going to change the division to multiplication, and we're going to flip the second number to its reciprocal, negative 2 fifths. Okay, now we can look at this and see if we can cross cancel. Okay, I see an opportunity to cross cancel here. So I'm going to say to myself, 2 goes into 2 one time, and 2 goes into 4 two times. Okay. And you know what? I forgot my own rule. My own rule is that I'd like you to look at this problem and say to yourself, is the sign of the answer going to be positive or negative? And decide that before you do the math. 
All right, so I know it's going to be positive because it's a negative divided by a negative or a negative times a negative. All right, and now I'm ready to um, do the multiplication straight across the top, straight across the bottom. And what I get is 3 over 10. And that's my answer. Okay, so that's it for today's lesson. I'm going to go on to the next page, and here you see uh, four problems for you to do on your own. Um, well, actually, there's more than four problems. So um, 16 problems for you to do on your own, and um, we will check them in class tomorrow. Thanks.